Welcome to Candleberry Chapel. Will you pray with me this morning? Lord, we are here this morning, all of us together. After some of us having a hard week, and, and maybe some of us feeling the letdown after the holidays, and just feeling not quite ourselves, but be assured, Lord, that we are grateful just the same, and that we have noticed the beauty that you surround us with in your world. We know you are with us every day, and we pray that you will stay with us. And be with us here this morning, Lord, and send the Holy Spirit to warm every heart, to light every light, everyone that is here. Let them feel your presence. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Join me in the call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. Please stand with us. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. So that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the people praise you, God. May all the people praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and God the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest, God. Our God blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Amen. And our first hymn is on page 13. Bless his holy name.
and 10,000 Reasons, which is on your song sheet. The other side is a different song, but it's on the song sheet. Bless the
For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. verses 8 through 13 in the New International Version. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glorify in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who took to him are radiant. Their faces are never <coughs> covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. And from Romans. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is is the word of the Lord. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Amen. 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 The splendor of a king in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our God Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. From age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end. Beginning and the end, the Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, let all the earth rejoice, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God. 
Sing with me, how great is our God. So I guess if you don't know our God, then I, I understand why you might not sing along. But if you know how great our God is, you should be encouraged to sing along about how great he is. Amen? Amen. Amen. I should have mentioned that the words were on the other side of 10,000 reasons. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you, Sister Allen. That was a wonderful selection. Good morning, beloved, and welcome to Canterbury Chapel. My name is Pastor Warren Manigault. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We, I bid you greetings as well from 381 South Main Street in Attleboro, where faith in Jesus Christ is our. Amen. Amen. To our friends that are visiting with us, thank you for joining us this morning. To our friends on social media, thank you as well for tuning in. The title of our sermon this morning is, What's in Your Mouth? What's in your mouth? Now, I know at first glance, that seems to be a pretty provocative title sermon, but if you stay with me and follow along, I think the meaning will become very clear. Besides, it's, it's a fitting title, because I think, after all, what can be more provocative than the human mouth itself, right? Think about what we do with our mouths. It's a vital organ that often gets overlooked, but it's critically necessary for eating and digestion of food and water and things that nourishes our bodies and keeps us healthy and alive. <clears throat> it's also essential to our inspiration and allows us to both breathe in and out the air we need to use and expel, but it also acts as a pressure regulator and a temperature regulator and heart rate regulator as well. It also acts as an early morning system, if you will. It's an early morning system regarding things that are going on within the body communicates when there's trouble in, internally that we might not be aware of. For example, a dry mouth is an early sign of what? Dehydration, right? So we know dehydration is a, a catastrophic event that will affect negatively the entire body. And one of the first places where we can perceive that danger is where? In our very mouths. In fact, Communication is one of the most, the, excuse me, one of the most, most important and uniquely equipped features that it does for us on a daily basis. For our mouths not only communicate what's happening in our bodies, but our mouths communicate to the world what's happening also in our minds, in our heart, in our will, and in our emotions. Our mouths communicate the very essence of who and what we are for the whole world to hear and see. Hear the words of our Savior on the subject in Matthew chapter 12, when he was speaking to some Pharisees. He called them, you brood of vipers, how can you who are evil do anything or say anything that is good? 
For the mouth speaks what's in the heart. A good man brings good things out of what's stored up in him, and an evil man brings evil things out of what's stored up in him. But I tell you, every one of you will give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word you have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's the way the King James Version says it. I like it better that way. Jesus was warning the Pharisees, as well as all of us today, that we will give an accounting. We will, have to, we will be answerable for every word that we speak. What a warning this is to all of us. Out of the abundance, the house, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So even those so-called throwaway words, or the words we say in jest or in passing, because our loved one, our words, beloved, actually reveal what's in our spirit. Our words reveal what's in our heart. And it is in our heart that we are acquitted and condemned before God. The Bible says it this way, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to the deeds they deserve, Jeremiah 17, 10 tells us. So you see, beloved, maybe you can fool Pastor Warren. Maybe you can fool your spouse or your loved ones and your brothers and sisters on either side of the aisle from you today, but you cannot fool God with what's going on in your heart. You can't Zoom God, as they say. You can't trick God by saying one thing, but meaning another thing in your heart. Because in the end, it is God himself who searches the hearts and minds of man and who will punish us or reward us, so to speak, for the true intent in our hearts as revealed by our words. For who knows a person's thoughts? except their own spirit that is within them, 1 Corinthians 2.11 says. Our mouths communicate the very essence of who and what we are, which is why I asked at the beginning of the sermon, what's in your mouth? Did you know that a study from the University of Arizona says that we speak approximately 16,000 words a day? And no man the study that used to say that women spoke 10,000 more than men was debunked. <laughs> In the study, the men were actually the ones who said more, believe it or not. 16,000 words a day. Think about that. That's 5.8 million words a year. That's approximately 123 million plus words in a lifetime. Wow. And Jesus said that we were going to give an account for every idle word. If that doesn't make you different, think differently about the words you choose to speak, literally nothing will. Knowing this makes me want to be absolutely certain that what I am saying is adding to, building up, encouraging, supporting, strengthening, and healing those who hear my words. How about you? Truth be told, it doesn't take a lot of words to communicate our intent. We all know that words can cut, they can injure, they can wound profoundly. Words can change people's lives and destiny in a moment's time and for a lifetime. Who knows, even the wrong words that have been spoken over time have pushed some down the wrong path in life, perhaps even leading them astray for all eternity. It doesn't take a lot of words, but just a few of the right words to communicate volumes to your hearers. For example, if I said to you, you're in good hands, you would say, with who? I'll say. That's right. See, I see you know this game. And if I said, where's the beat? You would say? Wendy's. Wendy's. I see you've been here before. Yeah. And if I said to you, what's in your wallet? You would say, capital one. Amen. You see, beloved, it doesn't take a lot of words to communicate meaning or intent. So today I ask you again, what's in your mouth? Amen? Amen. Knowing that our words reveal our heart before God, and really to others as well that are discerning, 
What is it that you want your words to show God and the world about you and what you think about him and his free gift of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ? David the psalmist in our text today certainly had something to say on the matter, and I don't think it's in question where David's heart was. Do you? Look at verse 1 of Psalms 34. He said, I will extol the Lord at all times. The King James says, I will bless the Lord at all times. You wonder why we kept saying bless the Lord today, didn't you? You wonder why Pastor Warren selected those songs today. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will praise, I will extol, I will worship the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me, she said, and let us exalt his name together. Let, let the wicked hear, let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name. Let us worship his name together. Now, most of us heard this passage before, but what we don't understand about the backstory is that David was writing this while he was in a cave hiding from King Saul, who was trying to murder him because the favor and the blessing and the promise of God was upon him. In other words, Saul who, would, Saul who had made himself an enemy of God and to those who loved God was seeking to murder God's anointed David in this case. So David had done nothing wrong but was being persecuted by the king and his countrymen. He had hidden amongst the Philistines, the mortal enemies of the Jews, amongst, uh, amongst the enemy of God's people. You know, the same Philistines that Goliath worked for before he stoned, hit him with a rock in the head, killed him, and cut off his head. Those same Philistines, he was hiding among them because sin, King Saul wanted his head. But eventually, they too wanted his head as well. David finds himself hiding in the cave with the ragtag crew of dejected men who are in essence the castaways of the kingdom at this point. To this calamity, to this disaster in this man's life, he says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. What? Are you kidding me? When calamity happens to you, is that your response? When bad things happen in your life, is that what you say in your mouth? Do you say, I will bless the Lord for this calamity that I'm experiencing right now? Or do we say, woe is me? Where is God? God's not fair. Life's not fair. It's not fair. They're not fair. They're doing this because I'm a man, a woman, a black man, or whatever man, whatever person I am. Because I'm poor, because I'm rich. What's in your mouth? To this, David responds, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Not complaints, not grievances, not worry, not sorrow, not whining about equity and fairness. But David said, I will bless the Lord. That means when things aren't going my way, and when things are going against me, I bless the Lord. That means when I'm guilty and when I'm innocent, I bless the Lord. That means when they hire me and when they fire me, I will bless the Lord. That means when they love me, and especially when they hate me, I will bless the Lord. And his praise shall always, continually, perpetually, without end, be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Let everyone that hears the good that has happened to me, let everyone that hears the evil that has befallen me rejoice. So at least when you hear that I got that bad diagnosis from the doctor, you still rejoice because God is able. That means you hear when I lost that loved one that I was praying for for two years, you still rejoice. That means when the doctor tells me the thing that I did not want to hear, I'm still happy in the Lord. Because life does not dictate my circumstances. Life does not dictate my happiness. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Let everyone know, the doctor gave me a bad report and it terrifies me, but it's a praise. 
shall continually be in my mouth. What did Minister Barber teach us last week? All things. Two things. All things. Just one thing. All things work together for the good of those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. So whether I'm ahead or behind, I'm still winning and I'm still victorious because I have Christ. Whether I'm a male or female, whether I'm a Jew or a Greek, whether I'm a black man or a white man, I'm still going to give God the praise because in God, I still have everything I need. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I want to talk about that for a moment. We think that worship and praise is an ethnic thing. We think black people worship like this because we're charismatic. It's not a black or a white thing. It's not a denominational thing. It's not a Pentecostal thing. It's a believer thing. The same people that say they don't want to extol God exuberantly cheer and scream when the Patriots win. But when we tell you to worship the Lord in the sanctuary, when we say praise the Lord in the church, you say, that's not my tradition. Really? I see, but when you go to another country and they have another tradition and they're out there doing a dance that you've never seen, do you sit on your hands or do you knock it on the floor with them and you try to do whatever they do, right? How they do that little dance? I can't do that thing. Right? When they, when they give you food that you've never had before, do you say, oh, that's not my tradition, or do you try the food that's different? What am I saying? I'm saying it's a mindset. I'm saying it's a heart thing. It's not about physical location. It's not about color. It's not about tradition. It's not about denomination. Not really. It's about the heart of the believer. When you know God, you can't help but worship God. When you know God has saved you, has redeemed you, has, is promising you eternal life, even though you knew you were a wretched sinner, not deserving of forgiveness, and he forgave you anyway while you were enemies, while you were sinners, while you were against God, Christ died for you. When you know that, you can't help but worship God. Amen. Glorify the Lord with me, he said. Let us exalt his name together. I don't worry about the outcome of the future, for I know and trust in God. For he is my hope, my salvation, my future, my life, my health, my strength. In him is where I put my trust. Look at verse 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. What are you afraid of? What are you scared of? What keeps you up at night? When I used to work in banking, that was a financial trick that they would ask you to try to get you to buy a prop. They'd say, what keeps you up at night, Mr. Customer, Mrs. Customer? And then they would try to sell you a product based on that need. Well, I'm telling you, what keeps your spirit up at night? What is your fear? Is the fear that your loved ones won't know God before they leave this place? What is the thing that keeps you up at night, spiritually speaking? He said, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. In other words, when you look to God, instead of your circumstances, you are radiant. Why? You are filled with his glory. Because you understand that God can do above and beyond what you ask or think. This poor man, he's talking about himself here. This poor man called God, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his trouble. How many of you have been saved out of all your trouble by God today? Wave at me, wave at me, wave at me. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Do you know what that means, the angel of the Lord camps around you? That means that even though you cannot see them, God has his angels around you right now to protect you, to strengthen you, and to keep you from danger. Amen? Amen. Verse 8, I love verse 8. Taste and see. How do you know if it's good? Taste and see. How do you know he's worthy? Taste and see. How do you know that God is glorious? Taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Blessed is the one who takes refuge. That means shelter. That means you make your home in him. David was still very much afflicted and in trouble. He was homeless in a cave, starving, thirsty, and he did not know when or where the blessing of God was going to happen and come true. But yet he did not waver in his gratitude. He did not waver in his faith in God. He only became stronger and more resolved. Not only did his faith become stronger, but he invited others to increase their faith as well. Taste and see, he said, that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. So what am I, so, so, so what am I, so what I'm in the cave right now? The Lord is still good. So what I don't know where my next food is, where my next meal is coming from. The Lord is still good. So what the, the threatening to fire me or, or downsize me at work? The Lord is still good. So what the doctor told you that you only have X number of months or years to live? The Lord is still good. Beloved, what's in your mouth? What is the confession that you are confessing with your mouth that you believe or don't believe? Are you believing man's report or God's report? What's in your mouth? Prayers of praise and gratitude to God? That they, they keep you and get, who gives you above what you ask or think? Or is it words of complaint and dissent? Remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in your mouth, beloved? Hear the witness of Romans chapter 10. But what does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew or Gentile. The same God, the same Lord, is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. Even if I'm a woman? Yep. Even if I was born on the wrong side of the tracks? Yep. Even if I'm an immigrant? Yep. Even if I'm fat? Yep. Skinny? Yep. However you identify. I say that intentionally. Because we got a lot of identification going on in the 21st century. Everybody wants to identify as something else. However you identify. Yes. God is for you. Praise God. Jew, Greek, slave, free, boy, girl, man, woman, tall, short, fat, black, white, and everything in between. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's not my word. That's his word. And there it is, beloved. I can't say anything better than this. The word, that is the word of God himself, is near you. It's in your mouth, and it's in your heart. And it's the word of faith that I am proclaiming to you today. This is the word of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Make no mistake. In Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. So I ask you again, beloved. What's in your mouth? Blessing the Lord at all times and having his praise in your mouth means living your life fully and completely for God. Through your acceptance of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and atoning sacrifice. Don't get it twisted. That's what that means. In order to praise God and continually have his praise be in your mouth, that means that you are living in Christ and Christ is living in you. If he's not, then you're really not praising God. You're praising yourself or something else. No longer living for yourself, but allowing him to live through you and sharing his life with others around you by sharing his gospel, his good news, his good words spoken with all you meet. Is his praise in your mouth? Is his gospel in your mouth? Is his faith in your mouth? <clears throat> For I tell you truly, when the Son of Man comes in all his glory, will he find faith in the earth? Amen. 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 Thank you.
Amen. Please prepare for yourself to give at this time. Truly, this is our divine assignment. This is what you told us to do before you were sent into heaven. You said to preach and teach the gospel to all nations, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach all to obey what you have taught us. This is a symbol of that obedience, and we thank you for it. Multiply it, breathe on it, in Jesus' name. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. And I pray out of his glorious riches that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner beings. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power together with all the Lord's holy people to really and truly grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Amen. Amen. Please stand with me as we close out with our closing hymn, Majesty.
you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. I greet you all in his name this morning. To those of you who are missing today, we love you, we miss you, and we hope to see you back here soon. God bless you. Have a great day. Amen. Amen. Amen.